Hey fam, welcome back to another episode of I'm Telling You. Telling you. Yeah, as always, your faithful host, Philly Mr. D. Mr. Gemini. Yeah, and um, if you'd like to continue the conversation, because we would uh, we would appreciate that, uh, go ahead and email us at uh, I'm Telling You at directionsofmusic.org. That's I-M-T-E-L-L-I-N-Y-O-U at directionsofmusic.org. With the clicky clack, get to that. I like that. That was pretty hot. I like it. <laughs> Yeah, and uh, first time, first time listeners, uh, this is a thirty year friendship of us just talking, chopping it up, getting serious. Sometimes not really. Some levity, some dad jokes, movie quotes, music quotes. We quote ourselves. We just put some mics here. That's what we did. Do you, I mean like uh, that's literally how this started? That's how this started. Yeah, you 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 set a bluff. You're like, fine, get mics. I, I harassed you for like two years. You're like, just get a set of mics, and then we'll just we'll do it. I, I, I showed up like two weeks later. I was like, here you go. How many conversations we had that just kind of went completely off the rails. And you were just, you looked at me at the end and went, man, I wish I'd recorded this. Yeah, but see, a lot of that was like for like, for like re reproducing sketch comedy from it. Like trying to actually like create a whole, like a whole thing that we would get do. On that. You should totally get on that. Start writing some. Yeah, but that, that was the problem, though, is we started doing this, and it just turned into this. And, like, here we are. Well, the platform's already here. Do some sketch. All right? Go. I mean, I don't think that's how that works. Oh, okay. Yeah, but see, didn't you say on another episode, you were like, yo, we should, we should be doing this? And I was like, dude, that was the original idea. Or did you forget that? Should be doing what? Should Turning doing this into sketch comedy. Well, I said... It, even just throwing it on if it was like a five minute bit, you know, like how The Simpsons started. Is that like, I mean, we can probably do that for our other stuff. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. Maybe because we actually write a sketch for, you know, the Corraler. Well, we've been talking about uh, stretching this out and turning into like a two hour thing. You know what I mean? So maybe that's you, the. You've been talking about that. We've, we've discussed this together. Don't even. <laughs> this you. You, you're a, you're a guy. There's a search for more content, huh? Spaceballs, the <laughs> search for more money. <laughs> the search for more content. You pissy, uh, I just, the word search. That was just for you. Uh, that's what it did. It was that's a connection it. there. I mean, that's how it happens with me though, right? I mean, like. <laughs> and it was, yeah, I kind of, I kind of softballed that out there. It's funny you picked up on that. Say, right here. As I gesture to my head and his head. Right here. Yeah, rule three. Yeah. Paint the verbal. See, I'm getting better. You got to right? paint the word picture. Got to do. You got you to gotta do. You got to do with, with the mouth things while you're doing it with the hand. Cause you know, speaking of the mouth things. Oh, yeah. Oh, to that. Beer 30. Oh. Dude, that was like. Clink. Mm. Salancha. Nostrovia. Salud. Cheers, mate. Good on you. Oh yeah, that's oh, that's good. Oi, oi. Don't you know? Right near the beach. Lord of mercy. <laughs> right by the beach, man. Lord of mercy. Do I tell you what, man? What about do I watched? I oh, I love. And I think we've talked about this before, like, all right, so we know that, you know, the whole Vince Vaughn, like Jeremy Piven go off on rants and all that kind of good stuff. I really, I've really found a, a solid appreciation for Dave Chappelle. Like the, the things that he has done, the topics that he has talked about, you know, he, he very much like the whole George Carlin kind of a thing. And we took it back to, to him before. He's, he's definitely showing his age on the stage now. I mean, I'm talking about no, Carlin. Just, well, no, yeah, yeah, George Carlin, but <laughs> he ain't showing Asian no more, unfortunately. <laughs> yeah, no, there's no more Asian going on there. It's all good. Not well, for, I mean, not it's for, not good for him, I guess. Not going to work here anymore. <laughs> uh, unfortunately. But he lives but yeah. on. He lives on. And to me, it just, it got to this, like, to me, it's not just the fact that it's a rant, right? Because, I mean, the art of just doing that where you can just machine gun it out there, pretty impressive. I think to me, the greater sense would be the validity of pure unadulterated 
honesty comes with it. So I think it's the, the, the combination of both, right? Mm -hmm. So it's just not the fact that it's, a continuous repetitive, like you just, you're, you're in this zone, this flow, like it's just coming out of you, but it's also very, I mean, just intelligent. And, and I'm not just saying like, you know, book smart intelligent, but I mean like real intelligence where it's, it's a conscious understanding. It's not just logical on a, you know, intellectual level, but it's also logical on an emotional level, um, outcome. I mean, just the overall aspect, aspect of it. You know what I mean? Kind of like, uh, so like when we were, uh, I've always been picked on for like looking too deep into shit. <laughs> not with me, homeboy. Not, not with, with you, me. but <clears throat> with a lot of other people in my life. Well, actually <clears throat> the one, uh, well, the one British slash American kid that we knew growing up. Um, no names, obviously, but uh, <laughs> I'll just say Mister Two, <laughs> right? Um, yeah, 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 um, yeah. I'm not even gonna go there. We're gonna, we're gonna leave. That right. <laughs> I'm totally gonna leave that right there. I'm like, ah, Dude, we, we've already like uh, eliminated names. Like, I don't, you know, we can't share now. Is oh, this I don't know. <laughs> and you talk, I don't know. <laughs> you do the word things. I'm, I'm not sure what I'm, what am I supposed to do with my hands? What you got me drinking now? That's a double hazy, bro. Yeah, strong. Mothership Connection. Parliament Funkadelics. Yeah. That's the artwork I was looking at oh, earlier. It's, dude, it's only a 7-7. Seven, seven. It's not that bad. After a 9-6. <laughs> After? You've you've toned it down. You've been decreasing. That's that's you know intelligent drinking, right? Well, you said seven seven though, right? Yeah, seven seven. That's that's not, luck, that's, that's lucky not seven and seven and just that's seven lucky. seven. That's lucky for me. Although Gemini apparently the lucky number is five, but I think five should always be a lucky number by default, like three. But I mean, seven has like, been my number always. I like high five. Five is a good number. It's the highest of numbers there is because you can high five. There's no other, like, can't high 10, high six. It didn't, no, um, it's a high five. five. Five is the number. Okay. Johnny that, five. I'm remember just that saying. high five we used to do in the hallway? Five, fab five Freddy. Remember that high five we used to do in the hallway? What, you mean the, wait, which one? The kid and play one or the top gun one? Where, the one where you, was it the kid and play one? Yeah. Yeah, where you like high five and then grab each other's legs and like <laughs> just shake the leg and then yeah, yeah, man, like an elbow bump and you know, yeah, I was that kid and play stuff. <laughs> oh yeah, dude, I love me some kid and play, or like you know, and everybody knows everybody who grew up. Like it seems to be a generational thing. I'm not sure if it continued after that, but like that handshake that takes like four different positions before you're done with it. All right, it's the it's the hand clap. You know, to the upward shake, to the downward shake, to the pound. <laughs> like, and it was just like you had it memorized. You had this whole. Oh, you had like open hand slap back and forth. Right, man. But yeah, we used to do that and people would just like look at us and just shake their heads. <laughs> Goofballs. Nerds. Nerds. <laughs> nerds. 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 Nerds rule the world, man. Sorry, I had to like revenge of the nerds. It not this nerd. I guess I'm just a geek, dude. We've you're not <laughs> a geek. I'm not a geek. <laughs> yeah, man. You don't you don't buy the heads off live chickens. Not yet. Not that I'm aware of. Be kind of weird. Uh, a little bit more than just weird. <laughs> that, that would be incredibly awkward. Is it a free range chicken? I don't know. It's a free range. <laughs> <laughs> I literally have no response to that right now. I I don't recall, counsel. Just saying. They don't pump full of drugs, right? Whatever that is. The chickens? Yeah. I, I mean... I mean, fuck. Mm, screw that Purdue stuff. You know what I'm saying? The <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <clears throat> Anyhow. Yeah. Thank, thank you, Tangent Man. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> tangent man you supposed to like come riding in on like a borrow just like ka -tunk, ka -tunk, ka -tunk, ka -tunk, ka -tunk. hola how are you doing oh jesus killing me senior senior colero 
Hola, how are you? Be like, yeah, great. Thanks. Benjamin. Yeah, dude. Coming with like a giant cape and just like flaps over your head every time you land. Can't even see. It's like blind. I think I should be the goofy Westerner. You know, like the cowboy. <clears throat> the goofy cowboy. Like Zorro meets freaking Opie. That you have to corral and like pull him back up on his horse so he can continue on. I, I <laughs> like the what like you know, whatever character, you know, plays against Mr. Magoo. <laughs> <'Cause>, <laughs> Dude, for some reason I just got like Hong Remember Kong. Remember Mr. Fui Magoo? In my head. I used to I used to love Mr. Magoo. He would like accidentally like everything would work out for him somehow. But like he couldn't see three inches in front of his eyes. He was like the slow version of the Roadrunner. It's the best cartoon ever, though. <laughs> I don't know about the, the best, slow version. Like. Of the Roadrunner. <laughs> well, yeah, because things always worked out for the Roadrunner, but that guy could like. Beep, beep. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we we were like never even on the rails, and you've already taken us like. <laughs> what were, were there rails? I'm sorry. Not known, not near nada. Well, I definitely wanted to talk about that that dude, Stephen Greer, Dr. Stephen Greer, that you pointed me towards. Well, well, more specifically, his. So that's the, um, from my understanding, his second production. Um, so the original was. The Unacknowledged. Yeah, The Unacknowledged. I haven't seen that yet. I have to see that. Do I? Because what was it? Steven Tyler was talking about. Have you seen the? He kept saying the same thing. Have you seen the unacknowledged? He's no. He's like you got. You got to watch gotta, the unacknowledged. Gotta watch, yeah. You got to. You got to watch the unacknowledged. And well, is it this? And is it you got to watch the? It just kept repeating himself. Pretty much, yeah. He says like, and that uh, that was the thing is in um, in this one you actually see the the video clip of him doing that. Like they they highlight it even further where it's just like yeah, look look. Steven Tyler says it like what six times? Come on, man. Oh, and yeah, with it, uh, Blink-182. Well, but so he's the counter. He's the counter to it. Well, so yeah, he's on the side of like where he doesn't necessarily prescribe to the idea that it is danger, but at least there's the idea that if there was a, you know, an alien presence, it could be deemed dangerous. Hmm. So he's on the cautious side. Not on the, the peace love side. I don't know. I've never spent time worrying about those kinds of things. Well, and this is- Is that weird of me? I like, think I think one of the great points that this movie uh, really gets at is that being these, these beings of light, like literally entities that are just pure energy, pure love, you know, pure understanding and acceptance and that, you know, that you are all, we are all one thing and we're all a part of that thing. And it's very much like they're being that you're just going to be a guarantee that it's a good thing. So with the, you know, the evidence that they, you know, show, obviously it's going to be biased, but the general perception is it's like, yo, there's never been a negative encounter that we're aware of. Right. So like if they're really this powerful, intelligent, capable, then they most likely would have done damage already. But the likelihood is because they are this pure energy and light of love and, you know, all of one and all that kind of stuff <clears throat> that they're, what? they're, they're going to be of peace and light and only that. I think even a person of an intellectual stature, like somebody who actually thinks through everything, they don't just, everything they see, they believe, you know, like I like to YouTube, but I realize some of it's and a good portion of it is BS, you know, but you have to learn to filter things and check references and read up on other places. But um, it's, it's interesting where that rabbit hole will take you sometimes. And, and to bring it back to Dr. Stephen Greer, like a lot of this stuff, even if like, let's be fair and say, even if 10% of the stuff you hear out there, only 10% of it is accurate. Still, like, it makes me question, like there's, it's a, there's a lot of space out there, you know, to think that we're the only intelligent life in the entire cosmos is ridiculous. And if they have the capability to get here, like feasibly, so that, 
you know, obviously they're not like now 500 years old by the time they reach here, you know, and all decrepit. Like to be able to blip in and out. And that was the the interesting thing about the research that, that Dr. Stephen Greer has done. To me, that goes to the idea of my belief is that there definitely is intelligent life out there besides us. Does to me though, it's like, it doesn't mean that it has to be biological. It could just be energy. You know, this goes back to the understanding of like a rock being inanimate still has mass and energy and you know, well, it, it exists. It's yeah. I like the way they did it. Was it the fifth element? The fact that that, that superwoman that they found, you know, that, that she was, she actually had like Supreme a, being. a whole nother twist to her helix or something like that. She had a whole nother strand running through it or something like that. It was like a double, double helix, something. And quadra helix. I don't know <laughs> that, um, all that extra DNA. And it was like superhuman, but it was still human flesh and blood. Right. You know, but that these beings are so advanced, I want to say psychologically even, right? I mean, they're just so advanced in their control of their emotions and their ability to use like loving kindness and calmness to be able to do these things. And I think that's kind of what it seemed to me like a lot of that, the movie that you pointed out to me was, was aiming at that these, in order to be able to utilize this kind of technology to blip in and out of, of different parts of the universe, to be able to tap into that <clears throat> seemed to naturally make them very loving, very caring. They were very advanced species to reach that point, to be able to do that. And see, to me, this goes back to the- um, And if, why worry about that is my point. If, because if they could kill you, they would just kill you. Yeah, yeah. So this goes back to um, we. Uh, I've I've talked to this uh, talked to you about this before. Was the uh, the goalless society paradox that I I thought up of is gold being of its conductive ability. You know, being able to to have stuff go through it so clean, like it's really clean conductive. The superficial value that we as a society put on gold keeps it from being cheap enough to utilize it on a grand enough scale where we're literally building with it. So we as a society, it's like if we could give up that superficial value on gold so we could utilize it for our technology to have better abilities, to me, the paradox would be if we were at that point, we would probably be even further along than that, that we would have an even greater technology than what gold could be utilized in for what we're doing now. So to me, it's like, yeah, if you if you go into that level of, well, gold is a good conductor. Well, but so me, yeah. if you're like we're talking about where you don't have those preconceived ideas or belief systems, you know, superficial valuing. If you're truly a part of what you believe to be all of the one, if you're literally, you know, the whole cause and effect. If everything you do has something to be a part of that consciousness. I think you could only be positive, peace, love, light, like all that, because that's the frequency which on which all that like resonates on. Well, that's true value. You know, to be to be able to live a life, because you can't you can't fake that kind of thing. Like, oh, just because I med meditate, I'm I'm good. Because it it it's a whole way of life. You know, it's the thought process. It's the way you apply yourself. It's, you know, you, your emotions send a ripple throughout. And that, that was the interesting thing to me, that the tie-in that I, one of the tie-ins of the many that you pointed out to me, and which is why you sent that to me. But um, all, all the tie-ins to, not just within this universe, but in multi-dimensions, that you're, your emotions, especially positive emotions, can send out a very positive ripple throughout the, you know, multiverse, if you will. But even even if you just think about the space that we live in, 
and what that does just to your surroundings. And that was one of the things that, another thing that came up in that special that you pointed out. What was it? Um, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind or something like that? Uh, correct. Yeah, that's, yeah. The, that's the title of it. Anyway, um, so if anybody's curious out there, Dr. Stephen Greer, Close Encounters of the Fifth Kind. And I thought it was going to all be about aliens, but clearly it was not. It, like he jumped into... It's like the theme. It, you the, know. There was kind of a theme, but it, it was it was kind of an underlying thing having to do with connectivity. Like he was telling you basically like it was it was in the release of the ego and the egoic mind and getting getting physically in touch with the non-egoic you in your mind and just focusing on what's out there until finally you kind of feel something like you're fishing almost like you send out your your radar it's just some weird, wacky stuff, man. <laughs> I, so you sent me, after I sent that to you and you watched it, you sent me something else. To me, there was a couple of spots where like I took some tie-ins pretty much towards the end. But one of the parts were. What I sent to you. Yeah, the, the, the yeah, the, what you sent me. The one part is speaking of, uh, you know, the heaven and the earth, the and described within the idea of a tree where you have the branches are in the air or of the heavens and the roots are in the ground or of the earth. And the I, idea further is we as true beings of light <clears throat> based within humanity, so our human bodies, we too must represent the same as the idea of the tree being of the heavens, but also of the earth. So there was a, a balance in there, which went back to, you know, the whole uh, Dr. Greer stuff about being within your conscious self. So doing that self-reflection and going deeper, however, still being aware of and a part of all things, because you're, you know, you're not just by yourself, you're all things. So while you are your own thing, your own separate entity, you are of a greater thing and you have to be aware that everything you do is a part of that. Yeah, there were a lot of fantastic tie-ins with that. A ton of with great that, quotes. With that you know, I, I love a good quote, but there, there was a good where they actually highlighted the entire quote. I, I actually wrote one down. It was the... Um, yeah, some... Dude, there was like... There, there was a number of them. Yeah, there's yeah. different like, well, like Maharishis, um, uh, I think Gandhi... Uh, Einstein, like, dude, there's just a bunch. It was the um, scientific ones some of the that really stood out for like, me, actually. It was the physicist quotes that stood out for me the most. There was a couple of those. Which, I mean, I technically, like, Einstein was physicist, so, like, but, you know, they didn't they didn't give him that classification. It just said Einstein. I guess it's, like, big enough. But the, uh, <laughs> many of the, uh, like, top secret, I guess, at the time, government projects and NSA... Project Blue Book. Project Project Blue Book was one of them, yeah. Which actually ended up in a movie, uh, Close Encounters of the Close Encounters of the Third, Third Kind. Guy. They were talking about that in the yeah, yeah, with Doctor uh, Hein Heinen. Hein, Hein. Oh God, he was actually one of the yeah yeah Heimnick. One of the scientists Heim on the Heimlich. Like <laughs> no. I forget what it was. Heimnick or something like that. Yeah, but yeah, he was. Uh, he did a cameo on that, and. Yeah, and I, I really do like the fact that it does come back to the idea of being a part of your own personal consciousness as well as, and that's why, like, the tie-in being the idea of a tree, dude, that's one of my things. Like, I actually meditate in that fashion where I envision being in that exact capacity of, of the heavens and of the earth, just like a tree would. Right. I do. I've been doing that for, like, probably a good while now, like almost a year where it's like one of my meditations and I, and I literally do it daily. Very rarely do I ever miss a day. And so when that, when I, when I heard that part, especially coming off of watching that, that, um, uh, Stephen Greer, it really just kind of like came together for me. See the, 
So I'm actually very appreciative that you sent that to me, even though it was like a pain to listen to sometimes. <laughs> Dude, this, this freaking guy was like the Casey Kasem of like scientific. No, but it, it it's a good cadence to listen to if you're trying to actually gain knowledge. But anyway, uh, the the concept of the tree, every time you mention it, it I, I think about like if you if you look at like a you know a big old bushy you know deciduous tree, I guess you know a big old bushy tree and then you look at the root system it's it's almost like there's two trees there's one underground and there's one above ground one is the root system and how similar they are but how easy it is to be in that underground and not even realize that you're there because you still see the tree oh that's a great point you know and it's like that i don't know why i just that mental image took me there that that yeah, it's you know easy to be in that underworld and realize that when you talk about hell and when you talk about heaven, it's a state of mind. So agreed. It's a state. It's totally a state because I've been in moments of hell. Everybody has. So here's the thing about trees. Well, I guess plants in, uh, in and of itself in a general sense. The roots as well as the, the leaves, like so both ends of the tree have to breathe. Mm-hmm. Like there's a carbon dioxide and oxygen give and take on back and forth from a plant. And there's a nitrogen and other nutrient. Well, no, no, no. This is just literally like on, like they both have to breathe. Right. So yeah. like, just like you were saying the whole, it's all perception of whether, you know, heaven or hell or whatever, because it's, it's the same on both sides. Like even science says they're identical. You're still in the same reality. It's just, you it's know, you're different. seeing it, you're seeing it from a different perspective and how different yeah. that perspective is. You don't even realize you're there. Yeah. Like, you know, you're in it, but you don't even realize that there's a whole nother side to that tree. And I think that's, I don't know why that just mentally put me there when I think of that imagery, because whenever you think of a tree, I mean, a, a good, strong tree, if you imagine underneath is going to look very similar. You could all, it's almost a mirror image of that tree underground without leaves. It's just with those. Well, really so here's, fine filament. there's a lot of truth to that because a, a plant Root. typically as it grows will not get larger than what its root system can provide. So as far as like, because as, as it stretches, so the deeper the roots and the wider the roots, the, the plant, you know, because genetically it has learned that, you know, a stiff wind will blow me over in this kind of climate. I mean, whatever, I would, whatever it is, yeah. yeah evolution, ever, it just, uh, the, the breeds that were capable of doing that just continuously. But can, if you think it's got to be locked up in the DNA, right? Well, I think there's a lot of truth to that, yeah. yeah. At least. See, we still don't know because they would, they still call, they still call a certain percentage of, and a good percentage of DNA, throwaway DNA. I yeah. think that's a hilarious term. Yeah, they that's just ridiculous. don't understand what it's there for. Um, yeah, but just because you don't know what it is, did, I don't know. We've, we've been there on that road, so. <laughs> take a sip of my soda here oh that's pretty good um with the with with the idea of like the way the tree works being in that you know heaven or hell uh earth or heaven you know whatever the um but you're still in a phys the same physical reality was my point that that you could, this is the weird thing and that, that I've always had trouble with and I don't know why because I think I maybe hit my head too many times to understand. I mean, not that I don't have low times, but the idea of just an acute depression that sticks around forever. Well, that wouldn't even be acute. That was the opposite actually. But it's cute. <laughs> well, look at that. It's just so adorable. But that that living in that mind state and not realizing that you're you're still the tree, but you're you're looking at it from the root system. You're looking at it from all the negative aspects, all the you know, and how easy it is to forget that there's a whole other side to that. You know, to think about and that's that's one of the interesting things about um looking into kind of looking into yourself and figuring out how to fix like little things about yourself and look into these little self-help things. And a lot of them point towards the whole thing about starting your day with being grateful. And I think that's an important thing. Um, Cause it's interesting how many times 
you can kind of catch your breath by just realizing how many things you can be grateful for. Everything. Even the simplest of things is what you mean, Especially. Right? Being able to live and breathe and experience this, whatever this is. Right? Dude, I mean, the fact that I have food in my house, that I have shoes, that even if it's cloudy outside, you know, hey, the rain's coming or it's, it's cooler today. Like, I like the idea of, okay, so for golf, right? to have confidence and be playing. So you go out and you play this one course and you know, the greens are like really slow. Well, your perception should be, oh dude, I love a slow green. I can be a little bit more aggressive. Like I can really put some speed behind it. Like I can, you know, take breaks out of play and just like push the ball right to the hole. Like there's, you know, there's ways to work with that. Same regard, you go to another course and like all of a sudden the, the greens are like really, really fast. And instead of being like, oh, I hate a fast green, you can be like, oh, I love a fast green. Because then you get to play them real soft. You get to really like take your time and look for the lines and like, you know, it needs finesse. And it's like, you have to celebrate both sides of it. You know, there, there is no actual negative whatsoever. Like both, both ways, no matter what you do, it's always going to be a good thing. Well, I mean, not looking at anything as a, I mean, just looking at it as a challenge. The not that a challenge has to be a negative thing, right? I mean, that's what hones you, right? I mean, as, was it? Iron sharpens iron. As iron sharpens iron. or So shall one man sharpen another. Yeah. That's, it's, it's, pulled that right out of my head. Do I pull, do you, I mean. I did, but I, ain't, ain't, ain't nobody with an assist. <laughs> You're not a. Say it. Nobody near nada like you near nada. I don't. Uh, I'm telling you, directionsandmusic.org. If you a pimp, oh. you broke pimp. Sorry, I had to. Probably one of my favorite ones. Dude, there's so many. See that? Oh, man. How high? There's so many good lines in that movie. So many good lines. You know, I figure steady high. <laughs> Take the test high. Get, Get high, high scores. scores. <laughs> right? <laughs> Right. Yeah, man. Again, yeah, so many good lines. I mean, I, one of my favorite scenes is like when they go after they, uh, like the, the dude stole the ivory and like they smoked it all and whatever, so it's all gone. And they're trying to make more. They go and dig up freaking, you know, was it John Quincy Adams or whatever, right? Yeah. And he's just like, dude, they make the one kid, the, the redhead doofus dude that's like trying to rush or whatever. He's like the super geek of the whole group. They're like making him like carry the body by himself in the rain or whatever. <laughs> and he's like crying and like dropping it. And he, they're just like, stop it. Quit being a bitch. Get the body. And it's just like, dude, every time I do, I crack up so hard at that scene. Because it, it's like, come on, man. You already dug him up. Just throw him on your back. Let's just go. Come on. Come on. We got stuff to do. <laughs> Wait, that wasn't that the one with the scene with the, uh, the dean of admissions? Was it the I'll, I'll fox with you? That was the guy from. Uh, oh yeah, what's his name? That's uh yeah, uh, what's her what's her name's father, right? In uh, was, the American Pie movies. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, he's the dad. Yeah. Um, that was also one of the guys, the original guys from uh, SCTV that we were just talking about. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Hell's yeah! <laughs> Dude, look at you bringing <laughs> it back around again, Mister Tangent. That's more like a corraler thing, though, isn't it? No, I, I, oh. or my tangent is a corral. Look at that. That's awesome. That, I, I, I'm, I'm, no, I don't, I don't. What, I didn't write what, the rules. I don't know how this works. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Sorry, old school joke. Or yeah, you had to inside. Yeah, you had to be there, dude. It just, it's <laughs> yet, yet again using hand gestures to. Yeah, I got hand gestures for you. Yeah. I'll, I'll communicate with you. <laughs> All right, <Yeah>. Goose. <laughs> Have you uh, sufficiently tangented us? Is that is that what happened there? All right, right. Well, good. I mean, what, do your thing. It's going to do what it do, baby. <sighs> Anywho. 
Yeah, I think How High is one of those movies that would definitely rate well on the quoting system. Like, for real. It's jam-packed. Massively. It's jam-packed. Yeah. There's a number of them. I mean, you can go way back, too, but yeah. Classic stuff we watched growing up. Like, Dude, I mean... Plenty. We still got to get into that. Don't get ahead of yourself. Well, yeah, what is it? Uh, disorderlies <clears throat> with the fat boys? <laughs> wow, dude. Dude, you said taking it back, right? I'm, I'm saying. You've been taking it back to some old flicks lately. Some stuff I haven't seen in a long time. Yeah, dude, like real hard underground. I still like, have to watch mm -hmm. Bill and Ted, the original, again, because it's been years since I've seen that. I mean, I feel like that's a new trilogy, right? Like how you got to do Star Wars. Now we got to do that one. You should definitely be doing Die Hard. There's some, there's some great, there's some great sets, man. Die Hard People got to be. Die Hard was a good one. Yeah, it was, man. Samuel L. in the third one. That was hot. There's some good quotables in there. Oh, dude. <laughs> some. There's some good quotables in there. That's funny. You're funny. Dude, I'm get, you could do a trivia of like fill in the blank for movie quotes out of that whole set, like just one through three, and people will be able to do it. I'm telling you. Die harder. Die hardest. Die hardest. <laughs> die, die hard again. Die cast. <laughs> die long, die, die long. Die. Die. <laughs> of course. Of course you went. Oh, dude, I had to. I had you to. You brought it back around again. I mean. Didn't you start with Chappelle a while ago? I mean, didn't we start this with Chappelle? No, maybe not, but still. <laughs> I'm, pre I'm pretty sure we were. Uh, That's a conversation. Like a true conversation does that. It goes in circles, doesn't it? I always felt like that a conversation does that. It has like a come back around again, certain cadence, but it, <clears throat> it kind of goes back around in circles. I don't know. Well, every beginning has an end, <clears throat> which is only a new beginning. Only in a reality based in time and space. Yes. Dude, that was dope. I like that. That was another part of that uh, close encounters that they talked about where it really wasn't about aliens. Well, the very little of it. The discussion was, or at least the the topic <clears throat> in question was, how could this technology work? And the individual said, "Well, let me ask you this: is like, how do you think ESP works?" And the answer was like, uh, every point in space in time. He's that's the kind of answer I would give. Like, ah, uh, if you get put on the pressure, you know, like, um, I got to give an answer right now, and yeah. Because I don't know string theory, like we're all connected. It's all the same. Yeah, but like, so none of it exists, but it all exists. Like it's, and that's that's kind of the like you were saying the uh, the part of all of this that is, you know, the logic or the the things with like rules and laws or, you know, what do you, he's got notes, nerd. Wait, no, because this one was um, this one I wrote down because it was from Max Planck. It was like the founder of um, like quantum physics or quantum theory or whatever. It was like the first guy, like the originator, right? The OG. All matter originates only by virtue of a force, which brings the particles of the atom to vibration. I must assume. Uh, I can't even read my own handwriting. <laughs> Behind this form, your this existence, <laughs> this where this form of existence of a consciousness, intellect, mind. The mind is the matrix of all matter. I totally butchered that, but that's my job. Anyway, my takeaway somebody's from that, gonna end up looking that up and they'll get it correct. But my takeaway from that is things don't exist until you acknowledge that they exist. Think about that. You and I aren't right in front of each other with microphones and headphones talking unless that was what we perceived or allowed to, to come to light. So it's only because we envision it as a solid structure that it does so. That's everything. But you, 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 cre you create 
matter. You create substance just in your being, just in your thoughts. Think about it. Well, that's what, what I'm else, saying. What else has the power to do that? That's what I'm saying. Our belief systems, our, our thinking, our structure, our mindset is why we have a solid world. Whereas like these alternate beings, being only pure energy or light, wouldn't have solid form because that's not their belief system. So to them, to be solidified isn't a thing. To be fluid or ever giving energy, just this, you know, like its own sun in a sense. You know, like think of like all the chakras aligned and being just pure energy within the world as it can kind of like go through you. I mean, I, I like to think of it. So, so the, the interesting thing was the, the, another one of the takeaways from watching that was that there was a lot of talk about the fact that even though we don't understand it, their technology revolved around a connection with their conscious mind, their consciousness, their, their sense not of, of the non-egoic self. The, you know, if you think about it, if you tap into that, that is the spirit. We talked about that before. That there's no differentiation. Like, it, it is still center inside you. Well, yeah, because even though you are a thing, you are all one thing. Yeah, it's that part of you that acknowledges that you are part of everything and that everything is a part of you. And that it, it's, it's all within you. Right. That you can see the entire cosmos within the human brain, and the way it's set up and the way it sparks to life well so this goes back to um if you look at a tree the way the the structures of either the roots or the branches and limbs are the same as as your, above so below well is the same as your lungs like mm -hmm. your bronchial network oh it breathes but then also your neural pathways in your brain well in trees i mean what i think that section of the amazon that People are always complaining about getting chopped down, which is a horrible thing. That's actually considered the lungs of the world. Dude, the ocean produces most of our oxygen. True, but when it comes to when it comes to greenery in such a mass, you know, when you're talking about the very fertile jungles of the Amazon, I mean, that's where a lot of our medications were found. Before we learned to chemically recreate them, we found them out in nature. And we took them away from their constituents and just synthesized the part that works. What, where did we draw the line at that? <clears throat> That's one of my things. I always think, you know, it's uh, the things that heal us have been around. You know, modern science is just a way of grasping some of the the technology that in a lot of ways our ancestors, when it comes to medical stuff, our ancestors already figured out a long time ago. So that thing that you sent me, that reading that I listened to, there was a thing in there where he was talking about Moses mm -hmm. and how he broke down that if any culture or society was being degraded or petrified if it was somehow or another on the decline, it was due to its own inability to be a part of the true law of what everything is, not just this earth, but everything, which yeah, is the, the to law. Be, well, yeah, it's to be like, uh, to, to not, to not believe in God that is, you know, omnipotent, but you know, benevolent, all that stuff, but that you yourself live by the ways of that. And then you now have a pure existence, which gives you the ability to be on that other side or that other frequency to be a part of that and to actually be of the heavens and the earth, but not need to be either, which allows you to be on the other side of things because you understand that that's just the construct of that realm, which is of all the other things. Dude, it's like, it's like really, dude, it's really deep stuff, man. It's like really gnarly. Well, and all that, to, I mean... Like in your everyday, like to take nothing personal. I mean, that's, I was just thinking about that at the end of what you were saying there. That the idea is to take nothing personal. That life can come at you, but it's just going to do that, right? And instead of getting hung up on the, 
you know, the moment. It just is. The rhythm is going to get you. There's something about... <laughs> There's something about not <laughs> knocking on death's door at least once in your life um, that changes the way you think about things. I thought that was another cool part about that movie because uh, Dr. Greer talks about how he died. At 17. Yeah. I do, noticed that. Do you know, I thought there was, was a lot of connections with me in that movie. Dude, the fact that I've been saying 17 a lot lately, when I saw that, I was like, hmm, is that a sign? Which made me think about the other episode when the bag dropped and you were like, Oh, is that a sign? I should have said, <laughs> yeah, it's a sign. All right. Going out of business. You know, I perfect opportunity to quote ghostbusters and I totally didn't do it. I'm like, my bad. I apologize for that. No, but that's what we bring. See, and I, you, you know, but I did, you dropped the quote you made, made amends for it. Well, I did. I think that's what we bring. You <clears> know, <throat> we definitely uh, hold ourselves accountable for sure. But, you know, <laughs> yeah, I had to, but yeah, no, I, um, <laughs> there was, to me, the, the cool part about, cause I mean, you know, having him say that he had had this, uh, NDE. Dr. Stephen Greer. Yeah. Yeah. It took me to this. All right. So you remember when you were talking about when you were like when you were like three or whatever and you, uh, you had those visions of those crafts and stuff. Like what three, if you four, were, yeah. yeah. What if you were like tapping into that other side and you were able to resonate on that frequency and you were literally seeing the other piece that resonates on that level. Just another part of reality that while yeah. it might have a, a look or sense or feeling of being biological in fact is not, it's just the, that it, that's its representation while you're in that crossover because you're not quite fully there, but you're there enough that you can perceive it and see it. That's what it made me think about because it like, well, that the, maybe these things weren't really there, there, right. That, you know, that I was just perceiving them as these tiny things, but it's because they weren't really there, there. They were just kind of reflecting a portion of their, their image onto me. I don't know. I've always wondered what that was all about. Well, just hearing... Which episode do we bring that up in now that we're talking about it? <laughs> uh, it was forget. a couple ago. Well, and that was the thing is, so him talking about the NDE made me think of you and especially with that understanding, it's like you were saying, it's like, oh, why am I back here again? Like you knew that there was a difference. You knew that there was another side. So even though you were out of out of your body you know, your, your, um, like your soul had, had transcended in a sense or was well, elsewhere. Anybody who's experienced, um, severe trauma will probably tell you something similar that, that I can read to that. You get to a point where you're able to experience everything, but it's kind of like watching a movie. It's, you're really not there. And that's a weird most people need drugs to experience that. Let's just put it that way. Um, it's a very weird experience. Um, I, I was getting ready to dip into that in one of our previous conversations recently. That you can you can feel everything, but there's no emotional attachment to the feeling. Oh, this is happening, but it's not like pain. So that was it's my weird. It's a very weird because you spoke of it in that relative sense. And then hearing him share his made me think of you because of like, you know, that gave me that cross. And then for some reason, that's when my mind skipped from all of the stuff that they were talking about. It, it literally popped in that story. If you tell me when you were like three and seeing all that stuff and it was just like, holy crap, what if you were doing it then? So you, and I guess the good point was, did that happen before or after I had my first concussion? Because that was right around the same age. I don't That's know. That's a good point. Well, yeah. Um, maybe I've just always been a little bit crazy. I don't know. Well, to me, you just, the logical would be you have a predis predisposition now to understand, transcend, 
process resonate on you know an alternate idea or frequency i've thought about all that like is that where my avm came from the what my my i had a when i had a hemorrhage it was before thanksgiving and what's the acronym i don't know what is that 2008 before thanksgiving 2007 no, i can't remember i don't think it's important too many head contusions but what, what 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 did you avm and uh arterial venous malformation myocardial infarction <laughs> <laughs> so a bunch of arteries and veins get kind of jumbled up together and when they can't make a proper connection they just can continue to reroute and it kind of creates a bundle like the way uh, nerves create a ganglion, it was like a bundle of That's interesting. arteries and veins, and it just kind of leaked. I think that goes back to our Phineas but, Gage conversation. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, you know, I've wondered about that. Phineas like, Gage did, was that was that brought on by that first concussion when I was like three years old, and that is just, I decided that playing around inside a. All right, my daycare I used fifty-five gallon drums for trash cans. <laughs> Like you probably wouldn't find that much these days. I don't know if they'd still do that. But I decided it would be a great idea to jump inside one because it was empty. And yeah, I ended up banging my head. I think it fell over on the concrete. And my head hit the inside of it. And that, yeah, I, I think I was about three years old. This explains so much. I've been talking about this. For, <laughs> this is the thing. I mean, I, I can't. This is, this is your I'm, thing. I'm working with what I got here, okay? <laughs> so is, am I. So what am I. Got. I. <laughs> Judge if you will, but... You know, between, between nearly... Between that <laughs> and many others that I've lost count, uh, you know, my AVM, my scrape with death, which you were there for. Yeah, dude. I recall... I Honestly, I recall... Second... Well, a central Park and full... Yeah, sorry. Sorry, totally tripped over that one. <laughs> that was an accidental pun on your part. I know that was. Oh, that was good. Anyway, where are you going? Oh, I'm glad we can laugh about this now. Yeah. I'm alive. Uh, sure. And sometimes I just wake up and say that. In my head, I don't like scream that, but... <laughs> That'd be kind of weird. <laughs> what? I, I don't know. That'd be pretty good, I think. I don't know. I think that's a good way to start your day. You I, open your eyes in the morning and just go, great, I got another day. I usually smile. Yeah. Almost almost always, I just kind of like smile before I even like do anything. Yeah. I'm pretty happy, I guess. You know, I mean, at least, like, yeah, you got to. Yeah, just don't bring me down. Yeah. That's all I'm saying. It's not a, it's not a mic for singing. I realize this. Sorry. Yeah. Blame the mic on that one. I did not physically blame the mic. Literally. Pretty pretty much uh, that's what it sounded like. <laughs> I'm uh, that's what I'm calling it. All right, Corraler. <laughs> Corralero. That's senior <laughs> That's senior Corralero to you. Y mi nombre medio is belly grosso. <laughs> what are you? What are you doing? Yeah. What? It's not late. Uh, I mean, <laughs> well, it's not early either. Oh, uh, uh, it's all good though. No, it's always good. But yeah. So no, I'm saying um, though, that's a, that's a good way to wake up. I think so. That's a great way to wake up. I use all right. So. And this is this is what I when I can, I wake up with a smile, and then I get a hug. That's always a nice way to wake up. You know, I don't get too many of those mornings left because because my, my mine has a license in a car, so she you know she she, she ducks me quite a bit. <laughs> uh, Need a hug, bro? I actually I just got one today. It was pretty good. I mean, I'll take one later, but yeah, sure. All right. No, I got I got I got my kid hug. I mean, nothing wrong with a bro hug. Dude, well, yeah, there's everything right with that. Everything right with that. I'm just, you know, I I only have so many hugs left with certain people that it's like, 
So, you know, I find that positive. Yeah, I get to wake up and have another day where I get to do that. Is that sad to think about that? Like, I mean, no, there, are there people out there that count the number of days that they'll likely have left in this world based on statistics? And Oh, I'm sure. Like, that's just a terrible way to live. I, don't, I would not call that living. I'd rather not count. What ignorance is bliss, right? That's why I say it's like the fact that I can actually look at it and say, you know what, I have another day to do this. Yeah, that's pretty awesome. So you gotta, you know, you gotta take the positives with. That's you know, because I do because when I forget shit all the time, I'm like, you know, memory's a bitch anyway. Like I hate that shit. <laughs> then you're responsible for stuff, you know. And just, well, so <laughs> I forget stuff all the time. I've been I've been thinking about this recently, and the the Einstein would constantly walk out of his house without pants on. I'll just put that out there. Well, there's just, I like, there's, there's a, a scene in uh, the movie Waiting where Ryan Reynolds talking to this guy who's like old and senile and he's talking about like how he like flips kids off and like screams obscenities at him and stuff. And he's like, you know, I can do that and not get blamed for it because it's like I'm senile. And he's like, all right, cool. He's like, what's the downside? He's like, well, sometimes I actually like flip off kids and like scream obscenities and I don't know it. <laughs> and, and then I poop myself. Yeah, well, but he doesn't say that. <laughs> <laughs> oh god you just you just ruined my I just moment ruined it. This, I, that's it you know what i'm we're done this is over actually we are, we are, we are done yeah i know we're uh <laughs> we are uh we're at that time again as usual we as need, usual we need you guys to continue the conversation <laughs> right was that was that like a cue to me to do that is that <laughs> <laughs> we need y'all out there to continue the conversation yeah, you can uh, email us at uh, I'm telling you at directionsofmusic.org. That's I M T E L L I N Y O U at directionsofmusic.org. Yeah, we would uh, we would like you to I don't know, fact checker, please. Um, Google her. Yeah, right. Mm-hmm. Correct us. Somebody who can just Google all over. Google. <laughs> just Google. Go- just you a real Google all over me. <laughs> googly person. Oh, you Googled in my hair. If you show up with googly eyes, it's even better. <laughs> <laughs> just googly dude you're just dad joking it up tonight bro. <laughs> yeah which i don't know it's definitely a thing that we do you're, you're getting better at them so i can i can appreciate that that's for sure um <laughs> still drinking oh well, i'm still drinking quite a bit here yeah i still have a little beer left too that's uh that's odd for us oh well well it's well, uh, i guess we'll be continuing the conversation but you won't be hearing the rest so until next time. <laughs> wow. <laughs> I guess we got to make side content. I don't know. Maybe we'll do that in the future. But uh, Well, we're talking about bumping up the, uh, I don't know, putting another hour on there. We'll see. I don't know. I'm going to have to switch things up yeah, a bit. Email us about that if you want more content. But Word. This, yeah, this is, uh, I'm telling you, uh, Philly D. Mr. Gemini, I love you guys. Yeah, it's uh, always be good to yourself. Be good to everyone else. Peace. Peace.